Nicholas Allen Doxey married Carol Jean Christensen. The two of them got together and decided one goal that they wanted, to buy a wonderful movie camera so that they could uh, show all of the things their family was doing as they grew up. And so we invested, uh, we saved and saved, and finally bought the best we could buy of an 8 millimeter uh, Bolex camera. What you're about to see is three minute increments. Uh, we take these and go have them developed. This is Uncle Kimball and Judy, Judy's brother Jimmy Kraft and Carol and Doug at their first apartment, a home in, uh, in uh, First East in Center Street in um, American Fork. This is the 132nd, I believe, conference of the church and I believe that's President McKay that you can see there along with what must be the singing mothers. And there, I believe, is President McKay. This is an important time to be at those conferences, and it was kind of a thrill to see all these people. I wish we had time to enumerate. Of course, we were students at BYU, so we had to have a picture of Brigham Young. And there we were at the new Smoot building. Doug was such a happy person, smiling. Here we are in Grandpa Doxy's backyard with their wonderful dog named Rascal. I guess they'd had several dogs named Rascal, but this little black and white was the Cocker owned by Aunt Cheryl. And I tried my hardest to just love dogs at that time. And this, you're seeing the big stretch right here. Oh, here's Judy with little Valerie, just so young and cute. She was the first grandchild, and so we were so happy that they had this little girl, Valerie. And she got a lot of the, the time here on the video that some of you of our own children will wish that yours could be this long in the shot. But Val was our special little gal. So we had to watch her smile and coo and rock and talk. So this is Valerie at such a tiny age. Pretty eyes, hasn't she? Here we are back at uh, our home in American Fork, then, oh, with Daddy and Mama. It must have been their anniversary, and I think we gave them that Book of Remembrance. That was a happy time. You'll notice that Daddy always wanted someone else's picture taken, not his, in most everything. There's Linda at such a tiny, I think she was 14, and there is Mama with her two loving daughters. That's at our home on 3rd West. The uh, BYU just built a brand new library. In fact, our string quartet uh, with Loya and Sunday and um, Margaret Vance uh, played there. I made this uh, beautiful suit in my clothing class. Now, where I got the derb, as we called it, is the question. And also, that was our wonderful car that we had when we first got married. A Chevy that was really had lots of historic value. Just like me, Here, one of us, someone is walking. I cannot tell you who it is. Sorry, the light is so dark. Oh, but you know what? Doug was the Elders Quorum president in American Fork. And this was our Elders Quorum hobo party at the uh, Orem City Park right there by the old swimming pool. The Slaters and Oh, the gardeners and everyone were there, and we just ate out of tin cans and whomped up some really good chow, and we were all hobos that day. Lots of fun. There's Doug and Carol, the best of the hobos. Fly over, oh, this must signal the 4th of July parade. In anyone's book, you never in your life take videos of a parade. And yet, here was the Provo Fourth of July parade, probably in 1964, maybe it was 63, but, um, but the state presidents were kind of the big ones in charge. There's Ernie the attorney went running for Senate, and uh, several floats. Some of these, though, had uh, great value because I, you know, I don't know who that was, but it was important, I remember that. 
but, uh, but some of these floats dated like the Provo Fourth Ward and so forth um, as they passed down University Avenue right at the Provo Fourth Ward boundaries. This was, um, the, I believe this was the Fourth Ward float right here coming down the way. Undoubtedly many of us were on it and it was just fabulous. That was the ward where Daddy was the bishop for so many years and I believe it was, uh, was the first counselor for 15 years and the bishop for eight. And uh, so that was the, the fabulous Provo Fourth Ward, one of the true wards of the church. And of course, many of these seem a little bit boring to you now that you've seen fabulous floats. But isn't it nice to know that in the early 60s, we had such venerable people as patriots and prayers and things like that. Oh, that was the Manavu Ward, which happened to be the only other ward that was the uh, true one in the church, because it was the Doxies Ward. Wish we had a little band music, but I'll tell you what, these bands have just gotten better and better since the 60s. They were surely good then, though. There's where I'm high. And the most beautiful float right there. Beautiful garden, American garden float. Grandpa Doxy was kind of like one of the because he's a stake president, he was one of the planners of this whole event, uh, the Provo Freedom Festival in those days, the stake president did that. You can see the wards all sponsored the floats and many of them had gospel settings. And here's one, this looks like it was made by Alex Duraeus, he always had those different parties in red, white, and blue. And some of those fabulous little little Shetland ponies. Here is the traditional Doxy family party, the backyard at 466 North, 100, uh, 200 East in Provo. We all got together after the parade every year. Uh, lots of people, Grandma Doxy, setting the table. She was such a good cook. There's my mom helping. And uh, I believe Aunt Cheryl was there. There's Linda with her blonde hair. And um, let's see, of course, Grandpa. Cheryl is there. And uh, can't place him. Okay, here is my grandmother's house, 164 North, 300 West, Provo. It was the day before they raised it to put a new Safeway store there. And here were all of her children and uh, son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, Aunt Rayola, Uncle, Uncle Burl. Uh, Donna and Warren and all of Donna's family and all of her children. Uh, there's Uncle Girl and uh, let's see, there's Aunt Fern, she's the oldest of the children, Uncle Clyde and Aunt Rayola, Uncle Girl's wife, Aunt Fern with my mother Faye and oh there's one of Donna's kids. They all looked alike, they were so darling. Loved them all. There's Donna, her oldest was Annette, next is Pauline, Mama, Fern, Donna, Annette in the middle. And Daddy saying, oh, take someone else's picture, please. And he kind of sneaked away, so we followed him with the camera. There, here they are in the official shot right by their homestead. They were all born in this home. And uh, this is where my grandmother lived and my parents bought a lot right next to that where they, met, where they built their house a couple of years after they were married. Here's the official group uh, along with uh, probably me as the cameraman and that was the people who were there the day before they raised that home. Uh, a little transom uh, window was taken out and saved by Uncle, Uncle Burl. Here's Del Ashworth, the architect, looking at Mama's and Daddy's new lot. I believe it was 2808 North Bannock Drive. 
the total view of the valley. It was the most supreme lot. They were so jazzed about building their house here until the next door neighbor was caught moving the stake, which would give him 10 more feet for his house, and Daddy sold the lot immediately, not wanting a dishonest person to be his neighbor. Also, this is a party at Lawrence Doxey's home, and this is in uh, 5600 West in Salt Lake. Oh, the day they decided to move the house from 156 North 3rd West, this is my favorite video. I thought we should put it into America's Home Videos. It's really a movie, not a video. Mama was so cold because there was no heat in the house, so she put those ugly red socks on. I was expecting Sherry and came over with the camera. We also took this shot of Valerie's first steps. That was at Grandpa Doxy's home. And this is the final funny of the day. Uh, for Grandma to be coming out on the tight wires of the Valgardson's um, moving company, bringing out the last set of garbage out of her house. <laughs> and here they are moving the house off of the foundation, just like the Romans did it, with a um, round, uh, big heavy steel pipe. As it would roll off of the last one, they'd put that in front, and that rolled off of the foundation and onto uh, the trailers with the wheels to be transported to the new place where that home is still standing, 875 North, 440 West in Provo, just south of the Utah Valley Hospital. Here is the new foundation that was prepared for the house's arrival. And uh, so all of that had to be done. Mom and Daddy bought that lot and moved. The reason they moved the home was because Safeways was wanting to build more on that lot. We had um, had a, a slight wreck and uh, had a new car then, that Bonneville car was, we had uh, been in an accident uh, coming back from the World's Fair in 1962 and so we uh, had to order, we had a Cadillac then that saved our lives but then we, we uh, bought the new, the new Bonneville. Here we are going down with our home along 500 West. There's Mr. Valgardson, and there's my uncle Verl waving on. Uh, they moved the semaphores. They rolled quite slowly, actually. I was surprised how slowly they had to move. But you know, they didn't even have us take the the dishes out of the cupboards. Had to have the utility people there to get under those big wires. Here you are by the North Park Rose Garden and the Pioneer Museum and uh, we're just going past there, these notable sites of the, the 60s in, in downtown Provo, and uh, moved along from 500 north to 800 north, and uh, let's see, I don't know, oh here we come, right to 800 north corner, where they used to have a grocery store, now that's all turned into a Mexican market. Here was the bounty of, of my waiting. Uh, Sherry was born, and she was our firstborn, and boy, did we think she was something. Born Halloween day, October 31st, 1964. Um, you will see different hairdos. Sherry's was kind of the neatest one, don't you think? I apologize for mine all through here. I can't believe I had so many weird haircuts but look at that baby responding to her mama. Look at her little nose. Doesn't she look just like her own kids? She was the first doxy baby and kind of the one that we just thought, oh, if we could have more like her, we would really be happy. And of course, she got the most of the, the uh, footage here. This is her blessing day, the day we, we christened her Sherry Lynn Doxy in the American Fork Fifth Ward. We lived there as uh, Doug was the manager of the Chamber of Commerce and we had a dinner at our home after and this was on Daddy's birthday December 6th of 1964. Look at the size of the binky and there I am wearing my prize winning wool dress from the Make It Yourself with Wool contest. I'm surprised I could even get it back on after having that baby but she was worth it all. Here's one proud daddy. We lived in the basement of Sister Chadwick, 57 South Center Street, and uh, he was the manager of the Chamber of Commerce in American Fork. 
and we were both students at BYU. And Mama uh, took forth and, and uh, tended Sherry so that we could, could have, uh, to, could both work on our degrees. And it was just the hardest thing to uh, go over to school every day and drop Sherry off because I didn't really want to go to school. I wanted to be home with that darling baby. About the time that we, I started back into school, Sherry actually had hair and Mama would put a curly, curler right on the very top of that little hair and oh, she was so cute. She was uh, in that dressing, that dress was made by Clifta Varney, a neighbor in the American Fork Fifth Ward who was so, she, I guess she gave us a, a baby shower and she'd been working for weeks on that which kind of dashed my plans for, oh, there's Sherry in her first cheesecake, uh, her first foreign film, how's that? And her last, I might add. For those of you don't, that don't understand what she's playing on, she's on a bathinet where you'd put water in the bottom and give her a bath in the bottom and then you could put the, uh, the top down and dry her off and rub her down and dress her there. And then there's a little hose that let the water down down into the the uh, tub, so that uh, you could drain that out for the next bath. So that's called a bathinet. I don't think you even see those anymore. Here's the California State Capitol in Sacramento. Doug and I went to a Chamber of Commerce um, meeting over at the University of Santa Clara. And we stopped in Sacramento to see some of the lovely sights there. And uh, it was really quite a fun time. There I am with my Mexican purse, okay? And uh, just standing on the grounds there of the state capitol. Nice wide streets. We really love Sacramento. And here we are at Sutter's Fort. This was where um, the, the state uh, fort was. Uh, that Sutter had and also around this area is where the, um, the gold rush took place and the, uh, the, the gold rush with uh, old Marshall. And I'm embarrassed to say this, but I didn't even realize at the time that this is where Daniel Stark um, came, my great grandfather, when he was a member of the ship Brooklyn. And then all of those workers came over and uh, helped at this uh, to to help with the the gold rush in these parts over here, and he was said to have taken a lot of gold nuggets. There's the lantana flowers I love so much. I I wish we could grow those here in Provo. And there's Doug. He loved life. Was always anxious to see everything there was. This is his favorite place, 17 mile drive. He took me there, we had kind of a little second honeymoon. Mama took care of Sherry <clears throat> and we were uh, right along the beach there at Monterey, seeing the beautiful uh, missions and, and all the things along there in addition to the, the place uh, going to Santa Clara at the, it a Chamber of Commerce School and that's where we stayed. So we were really excited to be there. We learned a lot of things. Even though it was a part-time job at the Chamber of Commerce, we played quite a role as the secretary of the, the um, state Chamber of Commerce, and we did a lot of things. They like make up the little thing called American Fork, the hub of Utah County, which is still being used, and we were the ones who got the freeway exits there on 500 East in American Fork. Here we are at the Oakland Temple with the um, wonderful fountains and uh, what a lovely, lovely view that is. There's Doug standing by those waterfalls. Embarrassingly I say I have still not made it inside of that temple. I can only seem to get the time to go to see the temple but not to go in and do a session. There's the view of the greater Bay Area. Now who would ever believe it? Now our son lives there and Dan and his wife Julie, and they truly love it there. And because they do, so do we. There's the multi-stake center on the same grounds. Oh my word, there's our car. 
1966 Studebaker. Oh, we didn't have any money for a hotel when we got to Reno, so we pulled into the church parking lot, and it happens to be Heidi's steak house now. But we were there at the steak parking lot uh, overnight and then went on to California. Here's Sherry's first birthday. This is at the dining room of Grandma and Grandpa Doxy, 466 North 2nd East Provo. This was the template of the birthday cake that was to be seen every single year because that's what she loved. Since she was our little pumpkin, we always made a pumpkin cake with a, a pointed ice cream cone at the top. And she did so many tricks. We were just, see, the whole family is doing the tricks so that she will remember them. See, there's, there's Valerie. She's a year older than Sherry. Kimball, Judy, Dad. Oh, she threw a kiss. Oh, and Sherry's just still pointing out all of the events of the day, all the things on the table, and knowing that she wants to get her hands in that cake. Aunt Cheryl, and Mom in the blue suit that Dad bought her. Oh, she's even, she has cards and packages. You'll notice um, if you're a little bit bored at seeing this first child get all this attention, don't worry, we'll whiz right past the rest of you so that we don't have to be bored with all of these, these things. Oh wow, a doll! And Valerie thought that every single thing was hers. Here are those two girls in the wonderful velveteen coats and hats that Grandma Doxy made. Wasn't that a wonderful little gift? We surely loved that. So fun to see them in those little dresses outside. That was actually, you know, November-ish uh, Halloween time, and here are those little girls had their coats for, for Christmas. That was the Grandma Doxy's front porch. You noticed Rascal running through there, and there they are. Now we, you know, not being one to go to stop the party, then we went over to Grandma and Grandpa Christensen's. And of course we took the cake with us. Most in the background, Grandma's little rocker that she got when she was a little girl that Linda has now. But anyway, we had this fabulous party over there for Sherry's first birthday, and wasn't she cute? She, we were so proud of her because she had actually that much hair to hold a curler, and we curled little fuzz on the side, and it was extremely exciting. Look what she got, a top. Why am I not surprised? That was my favorite toy when I was little. And she sure loved tops too. She knew just what to do with the phone, and boy, has she kept that phone busy ever since. Now here we are at Christmas time. I think it's 1965. There's Linda, isn't she, darling? I don't know how Mama's hair got up in curlers at that day, but there it was. It is proof that someday she'd have curly hair, huh? And then... Uh, and oh, there's Sherry in her red outfit. Grandma Doxy didn't want her to have a red outfit because she said it didn't look good on children, on babies. So I made her this little yellow outfit uh, for Christmas time, and there we are, uh, for Christmas, for her uh, Easter time. And there we are with Sherry, the apple of our eye. Could there be a happier little bunch in this world? Oh, we didn't have any money, so I pieced together pieces of corduroy and made that little jumper. She had to be the guinea pig of all my sewing. Um, I think that you will see that most everything that you children wore was made by mom. And that was really fun for me. That was a wonderful, wonderful hobby. I think it saved us quite a bit of money. We kind of seemed to like those shots because we loved that little chubby body. We didn't seem to think we could ever have enough chubby kids. We 
loved him a little bit fat. There she is in the bathinette. See, she kind of actually doesn't act like she loves the water, but she's getting accustomed and almost had a smile. There it goes, because she was happy because she could be in the water. That's quite a neat little invention, isn't it? Oh, look at her laugh. No teeth, no hair, just a big smile. Sherry, you were so darling. We we're just so thrilled to have you. And here we are with Sherry and her walker. This is at 57 South Center in the basement of the Chadwicks. It was a sunny, bright apartment, and we loved that apartment. It was so nice. And you thought that you owned the world, Sherry, and that little walker. Look, you're even being able to, to crawl. This is big progress. See there. You know that you're going places. It was kind of serious. Oh my goodness, you went to Monk Monk. That was the ugliest toy ever made. I think the landlady gave it to you, but it was the only toy you loved because you could eat that little mouth of the Monk Monk. And here you are with Lauren Clark, Roland and Jolene Clark's boy, who was born similar time, maybe just a few weeks earlier. And the Clarks had big ideas, even right then, that if we put you together right then, that maybe, just maybe, you would marry each other. Of course, that was never the case, because it seemed like Sherry got married before Lauren ever even decided he was going to look around. But here are these little kids, look at them both eating the, the uh, teething ring of the, the play, playpen. Now this, this is our bed in our apartment, and you loved it, Sherry, on this bed. You did some daring things, almost fell off a few times, but believe me, there was someone there to catch you every single time, because you loved that softness on the bed. But for sure you didn't stand up and jump, because we would never have allowed that. You know that. Oh, yeah, we, I must admit, we had pictures of Sherry doing everything there was. She was uh, everything from crawling to jumping to uh, sitting up. And of course, which baby would not have pictures of them waking up, finding the binky, wanting to get up, and of course, she got up on the wrong side of bed because she was a little grouchy until she figured out what she was doing. Her little crib was right at the foot of our bed. The one bedroom apartment, but a large bedroom. Here she is just waking up. Oh yeah, see? I can wave, Mom. She thought that was really, really something wonderful. Who do you think she looks like? You think she looks like the Doxies or the Christiansons? Oh my goodness, she's eating in her crib again. Here's this uh, string quartet, my goodness. This was my string quartet that was the Dixon Junior High String Quartet, then we were the Proa High String Quartet, then we were the Brigham Young University String Quartet. We loved to play. This was at the Vance's home and uh, about uh, 12th East and 820 North in Provo. And Dr. Vance had such a beautiful corner window and we would sit there next to the piano and, and play a lot, we loved it. Well, my goodness, look at Sherry. She's now, you know what, she walked when she was about seven and a half or eight months old. It was so young. And she was just this little will of the wisp, but she could walk very, very early, and we just kept going back and forth and back and forth because that was more fun for us than it was for Sherry. And of course, eating the, the Vicks Vapor Rub bottle, that was a hit. See, she's getting pretty good. Kind of the big thing was that ball. She liked the ball a lot. She loved to play with, with anything that there was. She was uh, always motivated by, by things that weren't really toys, like there's the box for the, the light. It, with, along with our eight millimeter, we had to 
have our own set of lights and hold them up. And uh, of course it didn't have any sound on them at all. But uh, the pictures I think turned out pretty good when you can consider how old these pictures are. Here's Christmas at the Doxy family. This is while they still lived at 466 North 200 East. They always had one of those fluffy uh, white trees. I guess that's where I got my love of those. And Grandma was always the ultimate uh, of, as a hostess. And we had the tradition of having the Christmas Eve dinner was started with the Doxies, and uh, we just kind of fell into that and have kept doing it ever since. And here we are, the whole family gathering around, passing a present around, and we take turns one at a time and open up those presents. Most of the time, Grandma had sewed something. She was a wild seamstress trying to make uh, a couple of her grandchildren items to wear for Christmas, and she had such a good heart and uh, was always willing to, to put forth a lot of effort for Christmas. That little robe is what uh, she made for Sherry. Here we are, uh, I believe this is at Grandma and Grandpa Christensen's. They in turn loved the green trees. So theirs was never, never uh, one of the, the flocked ones. Linda was the only other one at home, so she was there and uh, it was always fun. We'd go in their corner window. Uh, it was always the tree with all of the packages underneath. Oh my goodness, look what Sherry got for Christmas. One of the remote control dogs. I guess it was just a battery driven thing, but she sure had fun with that. Oh, Linda looks cute, doesn't she? She was such a typical girl dressed like every one of the times. Not to mention our Nutria carpet. That was the color we, we uh, did for the ward when we renovated the ward and we liked it so much and mom and daddy did their home that color too. Then here we are, I can tell by the carpet, um, at our home in American Fork. And it must be Christmas day right here with, with Sherry finding the, all the things that Santa had brought her. My goodness. How could one little girl get so much? Oh, we even got, look, there's Mary Poppins we got for Christmas. That was wonderful on a record. You know, there's so much of the technology has taken place since these days. It's just hard to believe, and it makes you so grateful for the things that have come. But in those days, we were just more than happy to have the things that we had then. There is, Doug wanted a valet, and there it was when Santa brought it to him. Here's Sherry with her ball outside. She got her curlers in her hair, the little pink rubber curlers, and she loved driving the stroller. That was one of the best. Oh, I can't remember this elder's name, but he, Dad uh, baptized him, and he was called, uh, he turned down a scholarship to Harvard to serve as a missionary, one of the very first ones to go to Italy. Well, here we had go on our ventures. We left American Fork and started working for the Great Salt Lake Council uh, in scouting. Doug was the scout executive when he graduated in 1966 from BYU. Our assignment was to go to the Grand Tetons to serve as um, in charge of the Teton Explorer Canoe Base, which uh, this uh, is taken from Signal Mountain up in the Tetons and it's kind of a beautiful photographer's spot and kind of a geological wonder there how the um, all, all of the, the uh, snow there made great big valleys and, and came down there and, and so here's the view. The Snake River of course is in the background which is what our life was all about with Doug and all of our guides, which were like our wonderful grown-up sons, even though Sherry was our oldest child. And then we persuaded Daddy, Linda, and Mama to go down about, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 miles of that river. And uh, Daddy, I believe, is in with Doug. There's Daddy paddling for his life right there. And uh, Doug giving him the, the uh, J-stroke. And... Um, and I believe Linda and, and Mama were in another boat and I was just on the side just taking those pictures. How
fun we had up there. Oh, there they are. I think that was Bob. Um, he was the, the director and Doug was his assistant that first year. And then we had two more years as uh, the assistant, or not, as the, the manager of the, the Teton Explorer Canoe Base. We would come in and give a J-stroke and come in to this wonderful little pristine spot. There was Sherry, her first year, plus uh, I believe those were the Cook's kids. And uh, they, they came in and uh, landed, I remember GTO, those were aluminum canoes, Grumman canoes, and uh, we'd come in and then we didn't have one permanent building there. Everything was a tent city. We, the, here we are taking them up uh, to the start of one of the trips. This was right at the um, dam by the Grand Teton, the Jackson Lake Dam. And uh, the boys and their dads, the explorers from the Great Salt Lake Council, would come there and put in, see the big rubber uh, bags that would hold all of their gear. We had explorer scouts who were our guides, and they were just like our sons. We loved, loved, loved those guys. We had so much fun. They would take two groups down the Snake River uh, twice a week on Monday mornings and on Thursday mornings. And uh, when Doug was always telling the scouts about this trip, he casually referred to it as two nights under the stars and three days under the water. And it surely was. This uh, first part was Snake Lake, they called it. It was so calm. Here we are at String Lake, or maybe Jenny Lake, right at the base of the Grand Teton when Grandma and Grandpa Doxy and Cheryl came to visit us while we were working up there. We would stand in the water and it was cold, but look, that must be String Lake. It is so shallow. And we would wade there and just have so much fun. And of course, how could the Doxies miss out on Signal Mountain? I bet you that that was the most favorite place. And the Signal Mountain Lodge made volcano ice cream cones that put chocolate sauce down the middle of a soft ice cream cone. And we always had to stop and get one of those at Signal Mountain Lodge. But here is the, the view again from Signal Mountain. What a lovely place. This is one of my favorite places of my life. And here, let's see, did we take, uh, oh, there's some of our guides there taking us down, Goobler, uh, Dearden, Let's see, Dearden took Cheryl, yeah, and I think Gooby took me, and uh, yeah, that's the time he was standing on his head on the back of the, the uh, stern when Doug looked back and saw him. Uh, said, Gooby, you're fired, and then Gooby got down. But here they are. Uh, what, what they would do is have the uh, Explorer Scouts come up from the, the valley on Sunday night, then Monday morning would take them and they would go down the river. They would come in on Wednesday evening and they could stay there in tents or leave then and make their own food. Of course, we had to go see Old Faithful. And this is probably lesson number two in what you don't take on, on your movie when you've only got three minutes to show everything. But it was pretty spectacular and we were kind of uh, excited because our work up there was extremely taxing, as you can tell. I mean, you know, canoeing and, and all of that. Here's all the guides getting together, swooping in together. You had to go down below the campground and then make a J-stroke and come up against that current or else you would never make it. You always had to come upstream to, to land. And here's one of the groups coming in. They were always tickled to get in. We had log jams and we had all kinds of exciting things down that river. It was, um, we called it 100 miles. I don't know if it really was, but it was close. And going from Jackson Dam down uh, 22 miles below Jackson Hall, right by the Cabin Creek Campground was where we were. Oh, there's Fetzer in the gray. I loved, loved, loved that guy. Now some of these guys are doctors. Of course, what could they put up the flagpole, but but the bow of a, a canoe that was taken off of the Moose Bridge when the dad couldn't decide which side to go, so he wrapped it around the, the bridge abutment. And so they hoisted, there's Bob, oh, what's his last name? Bob 
Oh, I'm going to say it and I can't. There's the Pyrenees dog by Mama and Daddy's house. Oh, I must have graduated. In fact, if I did, so did Doug. Yes, and there is Professor Roy W. Doxey and Carol and, and Doug, the proud graduates of BYU together. That was a big accomplishment, August of 1966. That was so much fun. And we were very, very happy. I did my last classes uh, by correspondence from uh, Jackson Park, by the way. Here we were with uh, the Christiansons and the Doxies, and and <laughs> here is Mama's big, big thing. I must have had a sore throat. There is the um, the hanky with the mentholatum on it around the neck. Oh, and of course. This is what Doug always hated so bad about scouting. He had to go through every Indian dance there was, even the one where the guy put the snake in his mouth. And so probably this is a scouting event, and you'll probably see a few more scouting tricks going on here, but the grossest was the snake in the mouth during the snake dance. I think Doug must have taken this up. Oh, look, it looks like some kind of a roller log relay. and. Uh, during maybe some scoutmaster training and things like this, Doug's uh, major was youth leadership, and they did a lot of this, uh, certifying to be leaders of these darling young boys. And uh, so that led to a lot of adventures. We, we really did have some great experiences working with volunteers and working with the, the professionals in the scouting field. and. Uh, we, we did that, let's see, from 66 until 70 for four years. We did figure out how much we were making as a scout executive. Oh, there's Bob, Bob, Rick, Bob, it starts the R. Anyway, I've got to think of his name. He was such a fun man, and he was the one that, that Doug served under for the first year at the Snake River. And the guys absolutely loved Doug, and he loved them. Well. Here, oh, I was going to tell you the earnings in scouting. We figured it out. We were making 25 cents an hour. Oh, look, this is one of our guides. He had a 27 pound Mackinac. Here we are back again. You know, you see these holidays, but you realize that in three minute increments, uh, you can't show everyday life like we do in videos nowadays. These movies were reserved for special occasions. There's Judy with Valerie, Mom. And Kimball, let's see, is that Kimball or Clark? Kimball, I think. And, uh, and then here is Sherry. Oh, I, I think we might have stayed overnight. Oh, yeah, we stayed at, at Mom and Daddy Christensen's because there's that beautiful Nutria carpet again. And look what Sherry, what Santa brought for Sherry. I guess she knew what it was because she immediately mounted it. Let's see if she knows how to ride it. Well, at least she got on it. And look at that pegboard. What little girl would... Oh, I wish I had one of those. That was really a nice, a nice thing. You can carefully put your pegs in there and save them. Of course, you know Sherry did that with her little eraser. She's a very meticulous child. And she knew how to pound the pegs in and she you know, she maybe we didn't buy challenging enough gifts because she just knew exactly, well, I, I guess, you know, Santa Claus had chosen for her to have these, so what can I say? But she was one happy girl. Look at the snow, almost up to Sherry's knees in that little red snowsuit. <laughs> oh, this is our our first real home, 2808 Delsa Drive in, in Holiday in Salt Lake City. And this must be the great day that David was born. March the 7th, the day after, uh, after his daddy's, March the 7th, 1967. What a darling baby, don't you think? Dave, I'm so proud of you. Weren't we happy and thrilled to have you as a baby? My goodness, it took so long to have you born. I had to talk for an hour with Dr. Ellsworth about BYU basketball while you were deciding to be born. Oh, and here comes Easter. 
and there's the infant seat. Well, those <laughs> it kind of looks wimpy compared with what you guys use nowadays. That was how we carried our kids around. And then, of course, this charming bunny that I'd made for Easter for Sherry. Oh, my goodness, who could have something more exciting than a, than a Clorox bottle filled with Easter candy? And, of course, it was all for Sherry because the baby couldn't eat it. This is our home. The first one we ever bought, it cost $15,000 to buy this home. And uh, we bought it from my cousin who is a realtor, Richard Van Wagnen in, in uh, Salt Lake City. Oh, and there's Grandpa Doxy on TV. See, Orthodoxy, they called him. And he was always such a wonderfully dedicated man in the church. Oh, there's Sherry and new baby brother. David, aren't you cute? A little smile. Oh my goodness. Here is that little boy. Look at how proud Doug was of you, Dave. And Sherry, she was too. Oh, you were <laughs> the cutest kid. We had so much fun in that home. Had fun, fun neighbors. And that was a glorious time of our lives. Looks like one of the Doxy and Christensen visits. With all the family coming up. There's Sherry and Valerie, Grandma and Grandpa Doxy, Kimball, Judy, Mama. Look at Mama in her red dress and Daddy. Oh, that was quite an occasion. Right out front of our new home. And there's the baby. I wonder if that was his blessing day. I bet it was. That was a special day. We are so excited. There's Linda, short haircut this time. Oh, how fun. Isn't that neat? And now we're just trying to pinch his cheeks so that he'll smile for us. He was a tank, you know that? David, you were so darling, and we just couldn't get over you. <laughs> Sherry's happy for the occasion. We kind of thought that he looked like he was big enough to get up and walk, but he was just a little a newborn. But he surely tanked on the way, didn't he? Well, let's see. Oh, my goodness, we've made your day. Here's some video of Memorial Day down at Hinkley. My grandparents' headstone, um, Niels Hiram Christensen and Josephine Sorensen Christensen with their children listed on there, and Daddy is one of them right there on the right top. And Daddy was in seventh heaven when he would get us to go down to the Hinckley Cemetery. He was so loyal to his parents, and they lived in such hard times. His father died when he was six years old, and his mother was the making of that man. He was so loyal to her and to his city and town. Well, here we are. It looks like we're back on the Snake River. I don't know how come we've got such froth looking. Like. This looks like it at Wipeout Rapids up there along the dikes of the Snake River. We used to ride up there and see the guides go through that sometimes on the second day out because it was so funny to see them come. We might even have some further, uh, further uh, footage later on uh, of going through Wipeout. But here we are, up on the dikes, just getting ready to have those people come down the Snake River in their Grumman canoes. We would go along there and find uh, wild raspberries, and there were a lot of them at certain times of the year. Sometimes, see that out there in the middle of the river, people would wrap their, their uh, canoes around those rocks and tree stumps. Those they called log jams when they would get kind of caught up and they were very, very hard to get out of. Sometimes the guides would have to even hike into the camp at night and get us to go get them. Well, here's what looks like the start of the scuba diving career. Uh, the, the cook, Ortley, uh, had his first scuba diving stuff and he loaned it to Doug and they tried it and Doug really loved the scuba diving and, and uh, and we, here they are at Jenny Lake or String, probably String Lake again because of its clarity. 
and they were just trying out the diving equipment, seeing how they liked it. That's right there at the base of the Grand Teton. We went up there a lot. Uh, that was one of our favorite places on the off minutes of this job that was such a taxing, demanding job. We didn't have many days like this. Probably you'll see them all on this video because uh, they were so few and far between. But uh, here were the two wives uh, going through, giving the bow rudders and the J-strokes um, around the, uh, the little, uh, oh, what do we call them, those little fla uh, plants that grew in the, the water there, the water lilies, the pine, uh, pond lilies. And we would go along there. It was so fun to be on that lake. Probably the deepest it was is six feet. Grandma Doxy about died when she saw this video of us taking those little tiny kids out in the canoe. What she didn't know is it was about two feet deep below them and I was on the other end. Well, here we go. I guess this is along the, the road. I can't even read the, road, the sign there, but we must be going up there along through the Tetons. That must be, uh, oh yeah, yeah, there's some of the nice views of the, the Snake River. It was quite an exciting river, depending on how deep it was, uh, made it so that it was, uh, whether it was good or not to, to go in. They had a lot of whirlpool rapids, one that Doug went right down in and thought it took taking his last breath. They ended up calling it Doug's Delight because he was so happy uh, when he got out of it, I guess. Well, here we are. Uh, this looks like, yes, this is the backyard of our 2808 Delsa drive home with the pool, complete with the pool in the backyard. And, uh, and there's Sherry, and she, she thought she was the owner of everything. She had her little trike, and she had the horse, and I believe the horse was really that little boy's right there. But she's, she kind of gave him lessons on how to ride it. We had a big shade tree and uh, little rubber duckies and David loved to go in this water. And he, he, he thought he was as big as she was when he'd get in that water. We had many a fun day in those backyards. Many times the neighbor kids were over. These little tiny children loved life so much. Oh my goodness, there's our little doggy we had. Oh, there's David in a pensive mood, kind of surveying where he can go next because he's learning how to crawl and get someplace fast. This was his little, uh, he must have been about six months old here because we had his picture taken in this little outfit. We had all of our children's pictures taken at six months old, which you all, all know about those pictures. But he was, he'd get up and rock and rock and rock, and he was quite a, a goer. Always trying to get something. If that's a racetrack, he'll get it. Mm-hmm. He liked racetracks because we indoctrinated him from the time he was this old till he got older to love racetracks. I think his daddy had something to do with that. Look at that little cute face and smile. David, you're such a doll. <laughs> Isn't he cute? His eyes seemed rather dark at that point, and then they went lighter. Boy, he was a goer. He's going to get it. You wait, even if it is on his tummy, huh? Perseverance, a great thing. And he learned that at a very young age, don't you think? Oh my goodness, how did this one get in here? This is, <laughs> there's Cozy and Dan and they haven't even been born yet. What do you think of that? I can't believe it. There they are in our home in Provo, still with the yellow ducks and all that, but uh, different kids. I think this one got out of sync when we put them in. What do you think? Cozy and Danny, my goodness, they were so cute. 
See, now, Cozy, we were just so excited to get some footage of you in here that we jumped the gun before you were born. Oh, but here we go. Here is baby Richard, along with cousin Michael Gashler. And uh, they <laughs> are on the, the blue, uh, the black and blue carpet, we used to call it, right? In the new home, just shortly after moving, uh, 12 to 13 days after Richard's birth, we moved to our new home November 15th, or no, November 1st, 1975. Well, I can't believe we got these. This is just a sneak preview of all the good-looking kids you're going to see in a few more minutes on this video. And enjoy it, Rich, because this is about as long as your little day in the sun gets, probably. No, we have other cute things. But those little boys were six weeks apart. Michael Gashler was six weeks older than Richard, and Richard was born October 17, 1975. There's Cozy, too. And Dave. <laughs> and they're about like two little pizzas in a pod, aren't they, those little boys? Had such a cute picture taken with Daddy holding both of them. And there's Grandma Christensen. There's, now there's Sherry and David. This is more back into the, um, the old, uh, older video now. I guess we got past those, those younger kids. And here we are, David and Sherry, both playing in the crib, just for a fun view. Sherry actually had her own little bed, but that was so fun. Now, back in context, uh, this is our home at 2808 Delsa Drive. And uh, these kids, wow, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. But weren't they cute? No wonder they got away with it. David loved to eat that. If you could see it, everyone, that old crib had every one of your teeth marks in it. Oh, guess whose birthday it was. Sherry always had a Halloween birthday party. And there's the Croxfords and the, the Petersons and, and um, let's see, who else? The, um, let's see, there's more Croxford kids. There's, oh my goodness, those are all of the old little friends from from Delsa Drive. <laughs> the Petersons had a lot of boys there. And the Sorensons, the Sorensons had children there. And Sherry was always just so thrilled when they'd all come to her party in costumes. That was really, really fun. Tara Croxford with the short hair there is one of Sherry's very, very best friends. And look at all the gifts they brought for her. And they always seemed to love to come. We'd take them in the big kitchen that we had. That's where our piano was, is right next to the stove, across from the table. And we'd <laughs> play songs for them on the piano, and they'd walk around and play the games. And then we'd just have them sit right there on the middle of the floor and have their cupcakes and other things. There's David in his walker, thinking he's as big as any of them. And he, of course, wants all of the, the wonderful cupcakes. He was such a cutie. Oh, look, he's standing there by our front door. That was the solid door that we had on that home that turned out to be a problem for Dave because when he got to be two, he threw a tantrum and landed right on the corner of that solid door and Blood spurted from his head. I was scared to death. We took him down to the Cottonwood Hospital. They tied him down on a papoose board and had several stitches in that darning little head. Well, here we are uh, with some of Grandma Doxy's um, sewing. No, I think I, I might have sewed those. I think I sewed those um, outfits for Christmas. And uh, our balsam tree, uh, Delsa Drive home in Salt Lake. And it looks like we had a couple of friends even there with all those cards. Christmas 1967, this is. As David was, now well, let's see, he was born in March. So he was about nine months old. And look, all of the loot there. David got a train. Sherry got a dolly and a stroller. What could be better? And Santa even filled our stockings. What a lot of blessings we had then, and we knew it. 
That was one of the best parts. We knew it. Oh, the excitement of discovery, huh? When you first wake up and see all these things. It seems like little kids learn so early, doesn't it? From when Santa brings them presents, they look forward to that every year after. David decided to leave the, the uh, tree alone and even go for the toys this time, although sometimes the package was just as much fun as the toy. Oh, there's Sherry, and it's typical. She was such a mother's helper that here she got a vacuum. And that was very, very fun for her. David got a barbell. Now, it's hard to, for you to believe that your mom and dad doted on you so much, isn't it? My goodness. Oh, look at Sherry. It's a natural born instinct. And of course, there was David. He walked just about the time of his first, I think he was about maybe 11 months old when he started taking his first steps. And here he is, just enjoying life to the max. He wore that little outfit for his one year birthday. I remember that so much. We scraped up all of his hair. Look at that smile. Oh, you kids are so cute. And my goodness, look at Sherry. She's the big sister to rock him in the rocking chair. She knows exactly what to do, doesn't she? Okay. He surely loved to rock, didn't he? He was the first rock and roller, I guess. And climb, oh boy, was he ever, ever feeling his oats. He decided just about the time that he was 11 months to uh, walk. And of course, Sherry whirled and spinned and everything, but he was doing really well to get all those steps in. Here we have a, a nice event. This is Clark and Karen's wedding in April of 1967. Brother and Sister Tidwell on the right. Then Sister Doxy on the left, Clark and Karen. Sherry was the flower girl then that, that wedding, and we made her a beautiful little dress. She was three years old, and she and Valerie were the flower girls. All the bridesmaids, except for Cheryl on the end, all of the rest of them were six feet tall or more. And so that was pretty exciting. There's Sherry and Valerie. They looked so cute in their little bridesmaid dress with their little nosegays, and they were so darling. This was quite a big event for such tiny little girls, and Cheryl there on the end. Cheryl later borrowed that dress and wore it for her own wedding. This is just a pan shot. You can't see much. See it now while it's lit up a little. Of the Pleasant View Ward Chapel, where the reception took place, up there by Stadium uh, Avenue. And you just can't see this, so we'll just pretend that you're looking at the most beautiful reception and beautiful food and all of that. And here was the official line. Kimball, I believe, is best, at, probably Kim and, and Clark, and uh, the official line uh, that people went through. Of course, we were all excited. We'd, we'd been there all day and working on the decorations and all of that, so it was a pretty event, and uh, didn't can and Clark look wonderful. They had a lot of fun there, a lot of people there. Notice how old Clark looks. <laughs> he even has hair, you know. <laughs> oh, he looks nice, doesn't he? Look at that beautiful dress with that train. And here is Karen's aunt, Sister Garn visiting with her. She was one of her favorite aunts, the wife of Stacy Garn. They eventually, um, they used to live in Provo, but I think they went down to, to uh, Scottsdale and opened up the Scandinavian shop with their son. There's the little girls all with their dresses. My goodness, they were cute. That must have been Christina too, looking on. And there's Cheryl holding Val. 
me holding Sherry and the other two bridesmaids. Now, this is going back. Um, here's David's big find, Easter morning. And Sherry, of course, showing him exactly how the duckies work. And she, of course, knew all about it. She knew all the ropes and showed him what the Easter Bunny brought. This is back to Salt Lake in our home. And of course, Dave doesn't know about candy yet, but I think that day he found out. <clears throat> oh my goodness, does Easter Bunny bring dogs like that? Oh, here's the noble Duke of York. Led them up to the top of the hill and they brought them back again. She was singing all the time. And she was a wonderful, wonderful singer. David was happy, go lucky, and always wanting to be with his big sister, Sherry. She was a little bossy, I have to admit it, but he seemed to thrive on that. And Doug was one happy dad, wasn't he? He had a darling, infectious smile. Wonderful, wonderful dad. And they loved him. Those are the rewards, aren't they? Of the hard work with a family. That little rocking chair was a very special chair that uh, was given to the whole family, so they all got to, to swing on it. And of course, when Dave was trying to learn how to climb, it got to be quite, quite hard for him to get up there and not have it scoot out from under him. So he had quite a time. <laughs> he was the caution. We we're ready for an accident to happen. Now back to the Salt Lake Temple. This of course was out of context here. This was right after the ceremony of Clark and Karen. Look how cute Karen looked that day. Her long hair. Right after the ceremony probably April of 1967. And they were a very happy couple. They're acting like they're just walking away. And there we are exiting from the temple. And there they are going to the parking lot to get away from all of us. east on, on uh, North Temple. And there is another little shot of the reception. This is probably the most documented wedding that we ever did because we were just still new at running our, our movies and we happened to think that this is pretty nifty. And they loved it too. Handsome couple. Cheryl sure looked cute, I thought, that night. Cheryl had been my bridesmaid. When she and Linda were both 14 years old, they were my bridesmaids. This is just getting everything set up for the backdrop. In those days, they did that a lot. Well, here we are, probably back up on the Snake River, and uh, we're, we're doing some more, more work up there, I think. Let's see, what is this? Yeah, this was at the Snake River. We had lots of those old army tents, but we this year, since we had a new baby, we had a duplex spring bar tent. We were the lucky ones of this whole outfit. And we also had a big, uh, a uh, big kitchen tent and a cook, and we took all of our laundry up to Jackson, and 
we were quite happy up there, even though uh, David was only three months old at the time when we lived up there. And uh, here we are having a little R&R. &R. Of course, David now was walking a little bit. Let's see, is that, is that Dave? That, yeah, I guess that is. Yeah, that's our second time up there. So yeah, there he is, and this is so typical of Doug carrying one of the children every time he was doing anything. There's some of our guides, and they always had so much fun. <laughs> These darling guides dressing up like Elvis. <laughs> they, oh, they were funny. We just had so much fun with them. What high class, wonderful young men. We still have seen a couple of them even in these later years. That Fairbanks, I think, now is the surgeon in the background there. But here we are, Snake Lake again, kind of same old take. Um, this year, I believe, was the year that we got the bus, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there it is in the background. The bus, and there's the old red and white carryall. I love to drive the carryall, pulling a trailer. And uh, Doug drove all the dads and their sons in the bus up to Snake Lake. It was quite a drive, you know, in the uh, early, uh, would go early in the morning, but still there's a lot of tourists out that way, and it was just lots of traffic to get, get them to this point where they would get ready. There's Doug Holt um, ready there in the red shirt to take the guys on the, the uh, trip. Meanwhile, after they take those canoes off the racks, that was special time for our kids to play in the trailers and play with some of the, the uh, equipment there. They loved to do tricky bar acts and things like that. And they'd play all the time that we just put them in one of those trailers and the whole time that we were getting everybody launched, then um, they were there. And then would be the problem because the guides had driven most of the vehicles up to uh, Snake Lake and, uh, and so they would get in the boats and then we'd have to take two or three vehicles. So we'd have to drive a couple of them down with our, um, us and the cooks and we'd go back on another day and drive more of the vehicles and trailers down. It was very common to see us tootling around Jackson Hole with a a couple of carryalls and a couple of trailers. And here we are back at 2808 Delsa Drive. And we, there's our backyard swing set. And Dave on his mighty steed. <coughs> He's a pretty good rider, don't you think? And we had a great big willow tree that was wonderful for shade in the afternoon. Happy-go-lucky kids. Our neighbors through the fence were the lampreaches. They were wonderful. We had such good neighbors, and we had so much fun. We were always, they had a lot of little kids in the neighborhood. There's one of them right there. Let's see, I can't even remember his name, but we surely did a lot of good things. Got the big red wagon. They were really happy-go-lucky little kids. It was such a fun place. We loved Salt Lake. <laughs> the trikes, the bikes, the, rag the wagons. We were in this full-time business, weren't we? <laughs> he wants to jump and doesn't know how. <laughs> so maybe Sherry will push him? Oh, I hope not. No, she wouldn't do that. Oh, I think that was just we were coming from Hawaii or something. We must have had the moo moos. Oh, here we are, back to our favorite place, the Tetons, Signal Mountain Overlook again and again. One of our favorite of all places with the aspen trees quaking and walking out to see the overlook there. Oh, that was so beautiful. The sun shined a lot. Those were such happy-go-lucky days. <laughs> that was a great, great experience to be up there. And of course, this was my favorite view. I loved the rustic fences. 
And every time when we would be trying to get those trucks back, I'd say, oh, let's just stop. Let's just stop. I want a picture with the Grand Teton in the background with us sitting on this rustic fence. And of course, we'd never have time. And this one day, we finally stopped and just took a little shot. I thought that was so lovely. Such a fun, nice place. Well, here is David in Ray Provost's barbershop in Salt Lake City. Ray was our neighbor. This is his first haircut. And Ray was so darling. Da da David had these tiny little curls and Ray took the little curls and saved them for me, gave them to me right there so that I could save those. But then he showed him that it was very special to have that razor and that it wouldn't hurt him. And David was a little inquisitive, but he, he trusted Ray. And Ray was so darling. He gave him just like a big man with that haircut. And always, uh, David, your daddy would say, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. And there you go with your little treat to prove it, a little sucker. We went on convention to uh, Boulder, Colorado. That's the Moby Dick Auditorium. We went to a scouting convention there, had a couple of days. It was very, very wonderful. We loved it very, very much. A fun little r, &R. Let's see, here we are at, uh, this is uh, on Delsa Drive again. This is how you got into our garage. It had a little gate there. And this is very typical of the kids standing on the top of the chairs, uh, watching, watching as they went and seeing who was gonna come up to drive up. And there we are in the kitchen, making treats on Sunday night. I think, yeah, there's the popcorn popper. We must have been making popcorn balls. That was very, very wonderful. See, even David and Sherry were very, very careful at what they ate. They wanted to have the very, very best so they had popcorn. There, <laughs> there's all the outfits we made. Um, Doug in his Hawaiian shirt, just, either we had just come from Hawaii or we were getting ready to go. Now this is something to behold. I wish we didn't have to behold it, but this is the Philmont Scout Ranch down at, uh, in New Mexico, Philmont, quite close to, to Taos, New Mexico. And uh, here is our little family, superimposed. However did we happen to get this, I guess, Doug grabbed it to go uh, on his trip, right in the middle of having maybe one of Sherry's Halloween birthday parties. So we've got that with the, the mountains of Philmont in the background, and, and uh, you kind of have to just pick out what you would rather be seeing, the mountains or, or the birthday party for this next little segment. Because this is what you could do. You could mistake that you had already taken that shot. And, uh, and not, and, and take it again and double expose it, which we have done here. But look at those kids, they, boy, they look scary, didn't they? I should say so, oh, there's Lauren Clark, he was Sherry's intended, yeah. And whoever would know the names of the others except for that cute little Sherry in her costume. But she always loved those birthday parties, so. In the background, you can see kind of the wide open spaces. There was a lot of um, beautiful mountain scenery. There was um, also, uh, Doug got quite a kick out of all the animals were up there. Oh look, I'm wearing my coat of many colors dress. That was one of my favorite dresses <laughs> in the day. They called me Joseph in the coat of many colors. We blow out the candles on the bare cake, can you tell? We had a lot of cakes that I made that were kind of cut up and made into shapes of different things. And that was a tradition that mom would always make one of those cakes for the birthdays. And I always had that ready for the birthday parties. 
here they are just playing. This is, oh, this then went, oh, and look at the, the uh, cows or what are they, bison or something in the background at Belmont. But this was the Christmas time at uh, Grandma Doxy's, I believe, yes, at Grandma Doxy's, I recognize the lamb in their basement. And, uh, oh, there's the antelope in the background. They went about 60 miles an hour or so, maybe 70. And uh, they, those antelope were very common for the Philmont area. And pretty soon you'll see uh, Doug trying to chase them, I'm sure, in uh, the car. But this, this whole Scout Ranch was a gift to the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, we have since been there, and it is quite a complex, and Doug was very impressed with it. Did a lot of uh, leader training down there, and uh, you can see those pronghorns now, and they're getting ready to run. You'll get to see them run soon, I think. Anyway, this is Christmas Eve, I think, at Grandpa Doxy's, and uh, the fun times we had. Wow, look at the gifts. Oh, and don't look now, but here's the coat of many colors again. Oh, <laughs> I think that was my wig. It was a real status symbol to have a wig. <laughs> it is a status symbol to have a wig in those days made of Asian hair, and then it was dyed red. And it was a perfect match to my hair, which was such a surprise that we bought the wig. <laughs> and I wore it on a few occasions right during then. I, I loved it because my hair finally looked thick. I didn't have to rat it. And it was quite the derb, don't you think? <laughs> oh, these were fun times. Oh yes, this is, this is great fun. I think he almost hit it into their favorite TV again. I believe this is 1969 uh, Christmas, and, uh, and that, it was surely a, a great occasion. There we went to Kim and Judy's house in Las Vegas, that one little shot. Here we are with another birthday cake. Um, this was um, probably David's birthday. I guess we're finishing off at Philmont. What a topsy-turvy video or home movie this one was. Do you think this one should go to America's Funniest Videos just because we couldn't keep straight where we were or how we were taking it? Anyway, this was more shots of Philmont Scout Ranch. It was a gift and these big buildings were there. It was a, a great thing that the Scouts were given. Plus the mountains, uh, was it Monte Cristo Mountains? I'm not quite sure. But there are a lot of lovely travel, uh, hiking trails up in those mountains. Um, they had one peak that was quite notable. Oh, something like uh, the Pinnacle or the Needle or something like that, they called it. And uh, this is quite a so That's probably it, the Pinnacle or Needle right there sticking up. And uh, yep, there it is. But a lot of places to hike and some really nice hikes. Great, we can, oh here we go, with the, the envelope and uh, they were running, I think they clocked them 60 or 70 miles an hour, right alongside the car. And there's another car in pursuit, maybe chasing them up, I don't know. I've never been much for these these animal kind of videos, but this was kind of interesting to me. And since then, I've become kind of a deer counter. How many deer I've seen that year and all that kind of thing. There's some bison. I had quite a few even right there on the ranch. Oh, and here is um, Cheryl with Kimball at Grandpa and Grandma Doxy's home. And I believe Uncle Ron, oh my goodness, take the shot off this lady. <laughs> and there was Uncle Kimball getting ready. I guess I was expecting. And uh, 
Oh, and there's Ron. Look, look how he looks like Christopher. Oh my goodness. Those two graduated from BYU that day. That was exciting for them. Cheryl looks so happy, doesn't she? So cute. More graduation festivities for them. We tried to, to attend everything we could to support them and to be with them and, and uh, did a pretty good job of all that attending. Oh, on the merry-go-round. We must have gone to a small children's carnival because there are the boats, the merry-go-round. Look at those two famous riders. Aren't they cute? There's the fishies. Wow, almost like Disneyland, huh? Now driving the cars. This place has it all, doesn't it? Yes, I'm in love. Oh, yes. There I am in another smock, so that's for sure we've got somebody on the way. Who do you think it is? It's Debbie. How fun this is. This must have been an occasion. It might have even been the 4th of July. Oh, it was. There was Dad Doxy going through the parade. There's Mom waving to us. She always loved to have her picture taken in these, these movies. Look at that tiny little pony. And here we are having a wonderful backyard. I think this is probably in Salt Lake again. And Sherry, wasn't she cute? Oh, and here's that baby Debbie, just yawning. Oh, my goodness. She was born at the Cottonwood Hospital, August 13th, 1969. What a wonderful, cute, chubby baby. Stretching, moving. She was quite the little girl. Just imagine, now we had three little children. I remember your daddy was so tired, Debbie because he had driven up all the way from California. We had actually moved to California, but I was here waiting to have you. And uh, so this is the view as we went back down to California. One of my favorite shots with, with uh, David on Doug's lap. There's Mama checking out the surf. And I think this was at, um, oh, either Malibu or, it might have been at Santa Monica. I think it was more at Malibu a little further north. Sherry, the beach girl. Oh, we even had Valerie there. That was fun. Mama, look, it's kind of a windy day that day. And there they are. We had, uh, I just waited at my folks' place till I had uh, you, but you called, uh, had Debbie. But uh, Doug called me the night before and I said, I think I'm in labor. And 10 hours, oh, look at him running in. That's how he loved to run into the water. Uh, 10 hours later, he came up from California and said, well, let's go have the baby. We drove to Salt Lake to where our doctor was. And Debbie, you were born. And here you are. Just growing up, you right there on the back of that. And you were a chunky little gal, I'll tell you that one. It was so fun. Favorite baby of 1969 in her first foreign movie, huh? And last. And here is David trying to make his little sister happy. And look how attentive you are, Debbie. This, I think this was down in, um, in our new home in Covina, California. It was something like 1469 Culver Place or something like that was the address. Culver was the mayor of the town. That's why they called it Culver Place. And uh, David loved to do various and sundry things while we were giving Debbie her bath. He was quite a busy boy at all times. And uh, Doug was down there 
to work for the San Gabriel Valley Council of the Boy Scouts of America. And he worked very hard for them and was a really wonderful, wonderful dad and terrific scouter, had a wonderful reputation. Here we are in our uh, living room and, and there I, oh, I went all over Pasadena to find those fabulous materials to make those costumes. And here are the kids for Trick or Treat, right there in Covina, California. We loved it down there. And then for Christmas, we came back up here for, for uh, the festivities. Since we didn't have a lot of things holding us down in California, we brought the kids up and we went to Grandma Doxies and Grandma Christensen's and Grandpa Doxies and Grandpa Christensen's. Back to Prover, we'd call it Back to Prover. There's Uncle Ron on the left, Sherry, Debbie, Mom. There we are, one big happy family. We made it up to Prover and we did love it. Look at that little Debbie. She, she looked so cute in that little red dress. And here we're trying to help David with his, his special toys. It was quite an, quite an event. And he had this helicopter. It was something, there's Mama in her new sparkly black dress. I guess it was cut, see-through cuts or something. And David got a transport with trucks and cars and all kinds of goodies. He was very happy. Daddy was up getting the fine big dishes to serve out of. Of course, he didn't want to be in the video again. And here's Linda, bless her heart, with long, long hair, getting a can of cat food, of course. How, how come we're not surprised that she loved those kitties? And here we are, Christmas at Mama and Daddy's with little Debbie. She was our favorite baby, born in 1969. Isn't she cute? Oh my goodness, were we blessed. And look at this. Oh my goodness, what's Sherry doing? Oh my goodness, look at Debbie, she's jealous. But what is happening here? Oh, she got her favorite thing for Christmas. A homemade blue tutu. What she had always wished for. She wanted to dance so badly and she just knew that she would be the world's best ballerina if she could get a, a tutu. So she stripped right down and oh my goodness, look at her dancing. Look at those little tiny steps. Twirls, wow, and look at that long blonde hair. Were we ever proud of that from how bald she was when she was first born? Oh, and look how absolutely wonderful she is. Sherry really knows how to dance and she's so graceful. Oh. Gee, everyone's wish and delight. Too bad we had all the presents so stacked up there so she couldn't have a little floor space. But she knew what to do with her tutu. And that was the best gift she got for Christmas. And everyone wished that they could have a picture of her. So here it is. Oh, here's the Goodyear blimp over the Pasadena Rose Parade. We were the guests of the Navy and the Navy men were the ones who had walked on the moon. Captain um, Conrad was one of them. And uh, see, this is just, just after, just before Debbie was born, they walked on the moon. And uh, on July 19th, 1969 it was, and these men came right in front of us with their drinks and their wives and sat right there. These were uh, Grissom, I think, and Aldrin, or and Conrad, these were the men who were the uh, men who walked on the moon. This is the We Are Three birthday party. Doug turned 30 and, and uh, David turned three. And I made a stacked up cake with three candles on top and 30 candles around it and they all blew them out. This was in our home in our family room in Covina and we sure had fun. And there was Debbie, she was in the middle of it all. And David, he thought it was neat. Now here's Uncle Kimball. He, he slept over, it was, it was on Easter morning. And here was Uncle Kimball and the kids were having an Easter egg hunt right while he was trying to sleep. 
Wow, what a time to sleep, huh? And they were looking all over for those Easter eggs, and he didn't even know what hit him. He was so tired he got in so late last night. But the kids love that Easter egg hunt in our home, and they had so much fun. Counted them up, wow, Sherry had eight, was it 10? David had five. I think they ended, oh no, Sherry didn't share. She took David's, that was it. How neat can you do, huh? So that, oh my goodness, and Debbie, she decided she better wake up. Oh, <laughs> has she got a hangover or what? She, oh, there's her vitamin bottle. She thought that might be a, something to eat, but it wasn't even any good. Poor little girl. But she was a, surely a happy, happy baby. And she loved it too. It was so interesting. We had her here, then we flew down and took half our family from here to go down there to her baby blessing. And there was our home. I think it was 1469 Culver Place. There was our new Mercury car, and there was Sherry with a broken arm from falling on the, out of the swing. To the next corner was the Banna School on Banna Street, and there were Dad and David there, all excited to be living in California for, day, for Doug work for San Gabriel Valley Council. I played in the Claremont Symphony. He tended the kids while I went to symphony, and this is what I found one night when I returned home. I quickly got out the camera light, got out the camera, and took this picture because I don't know who zonked out first, but they were sure good for each other because they were both just sound asleep when I got home from symphony. But the rocking was still going on. Well, this is our new couch. Boy, did we always want a new couch, and we bought it. It was a little too shiny for me, but it was pretty neat, so we got it. and. Uh, those kids really loved it. It was a little better than having uh, the couch that had the, the uh, churches on it that we'd gotten from DI when we were living in American Fork. So they just fit right on that new couch and they were so proud of it too. And they decided that uh, living at home with, with this nice place was pretty neat. And here they were in the gray bathtub, in the front bathtub, that um, when Doug picked out the house, he said, I know you're gonna love the house except for the gray bathtub. And, uh, but the kids sure made a bright spot of that gray bathtub, didn't they? And they had to all get together. Here we are at, uh, uh, on the beach at Catalina Island. Catalina had a camp called Camp Cherry Valley. There is Doug out in his scuba diving gear there. A lot of yachts were there in the outer part of the, the, val of the uh, cove. It was called Camp Cherry Cove. And, uh, and then they had this kind of aquatics area all cordoned off where the scouts could take boats out there and, and do a lot of neat things. And so it was just a heaven uh, for all of us. We got to go there for a week and, and um, spend some time. And uh, we just had a ball there with the Boy Scouts and being in charge of them at uh, Camp Cherry Valley at Cherry Cove. This was the, the little hike we had to take to get to our tiny little ugly cabin and uh, had a lot of uh, poison, uh, oh, what was, oh I know they were uh, prickly pear cactus and Cherry fell in some and a uh, heart surgeon was the one taking them out. Here we are, we went into Avalon and rode on the glass bottom boat and uh, those were great days. We had so much fun. We, the uh, only people that can travel on there are the people with a pass because the Wrigley family owns that island and so we have a special pass because we were with the Boy Scouts and we were able to go into Avalon and uh, spend some time there for a day. There's the Scripps Oceanic uh, uh, School or something like that. They call it, uh, I forget the exact name. But here we are coming back into Cherry Cove uh, in the boat and uh, having a lot of fun while we're at it. It's kind of a deserted, desolate island. They had a lot of, uh, of boars, wild boars that would come out at night. And you'd hear them uh, squeaking. It looks kind of like a lion head, head there, doesn't it? Right there at Cherry Cove. And uh, so you hear these 
these wild boars out there while you're sleeping at night. And the kids had a chance. Here was one of the uh, staff members taking them around on the boat, and they were just having so much fun right there in the little cove. We had quite a lot of fun in those scouting days. Lots of opportunity to, to uh, have some varied experiences, and we learned a lot of, um, about people and, and uh, diversity, and, and um, plus a lot of uh, love for scouting. Here's Debbie taking her first steps as a one-year-old. Look at the ugly chest of drawers that had skull and crossbones on it. She'd clap for herself, and then she'd walk. Every time she'd clap, then walk, clap, then walk. And this was right in the, our little cabin. Well, guess what? Now it's October, time for another party. For Sherry, look at Linda. She's dressed up as a little girl from Europe because she just came from there, I guess, or was getting ready to go there, I can't remember. But this is our home, 3481 North, 650 East in Provo. We had transferred, right after we left Camp Cherry Valley, we came to Provo and Doug became the manager of the Aspen Grove Family Camp for BYU. There's Sherry's Cinderella cake with the, the Cinderella carriage. And all of these kids loved it. There's Krista Thornock and, and Sherry and Mom. And let's see who else we can see. Can't see many faces here, can we? That looked like Ralph Barnes. Uh, with his hair, red hair, and he had lots of freckles, and we told, told David that Ralph, no, that uh, freckles came when you, the sun kissed you on the nose, and he says, yeah, but Ralph got a whole package of them. So there they were in our family room at 3481 North, 650 East in Provo, and uh, Debbie growing up quite nicely, and there is Christmas time, and they're bringing the packages over saying, who is this package for? Who is this package for? They wanted to know which package belonged to them, and so they did. They did have some fun doing that. So <laughs> they're pretty anxious, aren't they, to see who owns each package. That is pretty exciting. And there... Oh yes, you can tell it's still Christmas. There's those little Santa Clauses standing up that are illuminated on the, the mantle. I thought that was one of the prettiest fireplaces that I'd ever been around. And that was fun, and we loved our home there. Uh, right across the street is where they built Tinkview High School. But at the time that we bought our home there, it was just a lovely big horse pasture, and we got to take the kids over to see the horses. Debbie absolutely loved watching those horses from her bedroom window, and that was pretty fun. They're all busy in all of the things that are important, aren't they? You just notice they're trying to help their daddy all they can, and here are their stockings. Now that was very typical for Debbie. Her hair was always messed up, and she always had a dirty face. And there's Mom and Daddy, Linda. Uh, this is pretty exciting. I think this is when Linda went to, to Europe, to, or maybe just came back. One or the other, I can't remember which. We'll have to ask her if it was in 1969. Oh, that must be she going up there onto the ramp. Okay, so here we have another party. My goodness, we were party people, weren't we? Was this for David's birthday, do you think? It might be. And we were there in the family room, Debbie right in the middle. Oh, Sherry, she was the one who took care of Debbie every second. Poor kid, my goodness. She really got the rough treatment, huh? I believe this is David's birthday. And he looks like he's having a lot of fun. His birthday's March 7th, and it's funny, most of the kids always got him a kite. He had so many kites every time, it was just because he had the March birthday. And of course, um, the friends always showed up, older friends, younger friends. We just invited lots of families and they all came like that. And he was so thrilled always with his presence. And Sherry, there she is being the little mother as always in our family room. It's like I'm in a zoot suit with those pants. Of course, we always invited the grandparents and they all came. They always came with bells on. 
Now let's see, who's that? Is that Uncle, Uncle Clark and Aunt Karen are there too? So I'm probably gonna see some of those Doxy cousins. That would be fun. Oh, he's so excited. Yeah, that looks, I bet you that's Christine on Karen's lap there on the piano bench. Oh yes, this is very, very exciting. Look at that. I'm not responsible for any of the hairstyles I ever had on birthday days because I spent more time on the, the parties than I did on my hair. But look at the race car. Oh, he got all the candles out. Race car cake. He was so excited about that. We loved creative parties and it was always just so fun to do that. Oh, look, there's um, Atkinson's. Thornox. Let's see, I have a Kevin Thornock. Debbie there with her ice cream cone. Dave with his ice cream. I oh instead of serving drinks, I made jello in those little cups. I always remember that so it wouldn't spill. I always made him a little jello. Oh yeah. It's funny that uh, Dave isn't uh, quite eating. He's just playing with these toys. Can you believe that? Now here's uh, President um, Lee, uh, Harold B. Lee. No, yeah, Harold B. Lee. And there is President Joseph Fielding Smith. It looks like his script just fell off in the wind. Uh, Delbert Stapley, a lot of uh, um, Kimball, President Kimball. This was in about uh, July or August of 19, what, 70? Or, I think it was 70, or maybe it was 71, when the, the uh, Provo Temple, and there's Harold Glenn Clark, he was the president of the temple, and a um, friend of the Doxy family lot. That's when the temple was dedicated, and I didn't go. I was home uh, getting ready to have a baby, I think. But here's the Aspen Grove hostesses, Susie, Mary, and Joy Frost, and, and Laycock, Elizabeth Laycock. This is just typical of the staff shows that we had at Aspen Grove. We had a rolled up, uh, the curtain was a rolled up, big, big tarp, and, um, and oh, this looks like uh, um, the one who married the Grosbeck boy, Aunt Ju Julie's uh, um, uncle's wife. Um, <laughs> Grosbeck, what's her name? Uh, anyway, but here's our, our hostesses singing. They, they would come out and do two shows. The hostesses would tell what job they did there. Look like Waddle Yachi. Got some families up helping them out with it. Doing the staff show at Aspen Grove for all the campers as they would come each week on Saturday night. This, this show would go on. And then the next time, it was on Friday night for uh, the farewell show. But the staff members took a giant part in this, and we were so proud of them. These kids were just as close to us as could be. We spent a lot of time with them, and uh, of course they, they had so much fun on their own too, but it was still fun to be a part of uh, the leadership at Aspen Grove. Doug was the manager of the entire camp, and only the second manager the camp ever had. And so uh, sometimes they'd involve our kids. There's Sherry singing a little song. Oh, and my word, there again was one of the things Doug hated most, but this wonderful person, Dennis Rock, he knew how to do uh, the, the eagle dance, I think it was, with all the hoops. And so he was just really, really fun as he did that. And so he was quite an entertainer for that summer there. The staff was superior, their spirit was great, and the Spirit of the Lord reigned during the, the weeks there at Aspen Grove. It was a wonderful uh, work. It was a lot of hard work. It was night and day work, uh, sometimes 23, 24 hours a day. It was something that we shared and we were creative with it and had a lot of exciting experiences. Here's a few skits going on again as you see the staff shows. Uh, like I say, you'll see a few of these interspersed because that truly was our life. We, would, we interacted a lot with the guests. We did a lot to entertain them. 
we dedicated our lives to that and it certainly paid off because we built the camp from about 100 a week to about 350 to 375 a week, which was our very, very maximum at those times before they built the new lodges. So we were really uh, in the building stages. We, we had a lot of growth and uh, took the camp from uh, almost being in the red almost all the time to doing very, very well, thank you. And it was, it was a wonderful experience to rub shoulders with all of these staff members as well as the guests from all over the nation, some from all over the world. Here's our family's uh, addition to the Christmas parade in Provo. And uh, here we have the little chorus, the Christmas chorus, and we have this, this Santa's North Pole singers and uh, all the Doxy cousins, Sherry and Val. See, there's the sign, Santa's North Pole singers. And boy, you can tell they're singing a lot, can't you? Maybe we had a few neighbors. I think that was Kevin Thornock there. And the kids look like they're half asleep that are reading on the float, but they had fun because they wanted to be a part of the Christmas parade. And so they did that. And there's Dave with his Santa, or his clown suit on. They're walking on University Avenue, uh, about 8th North. Well, Sherry always wanted a Chrissy doll and Debbie got a dolly that was as big as she was. And so we had fun that next Christmas. We had, Sherry actually got the dolly she asked for, and look at all of the loot there, and a pinion pie, pine tree. That was to be, everyone wished for one of those. And so here we are at Christmas. I believe it is uh, December of 1970 if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this is our downstairs family room. It looked like the, the sewing machine was still out as usual. <coughs> and, uh, and there we have it. Now we have uh, Dan, the little big man, right there. He was, I don't know what happened to his baby picture, but there he is. Boy, I hope we see more of Dan, huh? He was quite the goer, I'll tell you. And uh, we, I hope this wasn't the, no, I knew we took pictures of, of Dan when he was first born. Oh, look, there she is, Debbie's patting Dan on the head. And there he is in his little infant car seat on the couch. He was a darling boy. He was just solid as could be and quite, quite willing to be a part of anything that his sisters would do with him. Look, Sherry got her Christy doll and her basket for her bike. Oh, and there's Dan. Now, this man is going places. He was born August 18th of 1971. Also, this has got to be 1971, uh, Christmas of 71. So August, September, October, November, December, and that was about four months old at Christmas time. Then the racer car, the racer, um, cake for David. There he is. And that was at our home at, uh, at 3481 North, 650 East. And this is on the back porch outside. David loved cars. He, he had several racer cakes because he loved that so much. He really loved it. Okay. Um, let's see, oh look there, Dan was doing some fancy footwork. He wanted to get down and get at it. Dan has never been one to just sit by, and there's Debbie to show off and have a little fun. Our lives are extremely busy, but we were so blessed to have that little boy. He had a little sailor suit. I'd had a doll named Sailor Dan, and uh, I named him Dan for several reasons. I liked the biblical name, but he was Dan for the Dan, the little Sailor Man doll I had earlier when I was a little child. My dad brought it home from the war, and also for Oh Danny Boy, the song. I absolutely loved Oh Danny Boy, so that was pretty fun. And there he is trying to learn how to walk, it looks like. 
Boy, those years whipped past quite fast, don't you think? Yeah. All right. He was up and at him, I'll tell you that. He was a good-natured little kid. He was really a lot of fun. Oh, come on, Dan. Get up and get at it. You're trying to bribe him to walk. <laughs> yeah. See those Christmas socks in the background? Wow, I don't know what they've got all over that carpet, but it looks pretty wild. And there we are, just all set for Christmas in our red dresses. And oh look, now there's Dan with his finger in his mouth. That was quite a, a start of something. Dan always kept his finger in his mouth clear when he was eight years old. It was the hardest habit we ever had to break. And Dr. Robbins, when I would belabor the problem, he would say, you give him till he's eight and he won't suck his finger anymore. And guess what? He quit right when he turned eight. It was a little taxing for us all. There's Grandpa Doxy taking a picture. There's Dan plugging in, we called it. And he sure loved to do that. And I guess we're gonna be able to, to talk about Christmas on this occasion with a program because um, every, every Christmas we always had special programs. So here's the kids up singing their songs Jerry always used to recite the Christmas Mass, and many of them did, um, um, would recite the night before Christmas, before, on our little home evenings before Christmas. So, <laughs> I don't know what the arm are doing, but they're surely keeping busy. And there is that little Dan. He thinks that we made this special just for him. He's trying to get in a few things uh, on the side while we're distracted watching at the program, Dan is busy thinking, what can I do next at that Christmas tree? And that's exactly what he's trying for. Yeah. Look at that. They're getting to open a little present here. This is pretty exciting. Gee, Mom's in a short little dress there. Oh, I remember that red dress we made for Sherry. <laughs> Made her another dress there. I guess Linda and Mom and Daddy gave Sherry that dress. And there was Dan. He got some new overalls. Oh, that was so exciting. Most of their clothes we made from, from a lot of the polyesters that were around. It was the big rage. Man, when we found out you didn't have to iron clothes, everybody bought polyester everything. So some of you were the guinea pigs and had to wear polyester quite a bit. Oh, and guess what? Sherry got another vacuum. That's, I think we've even created more of an area that needed to be vacuumed, so that was good too. So she always had to have some little work, work tool, and that made her happy. And that was pretty exciting. They all loved to share each other's toys, and of course, Dan was after every single one toy. <laughs> Just try to keep me away. Just try. But boy, oh boy, does Sherry have a lot of trouble here. Oh, white out on skis. Wow, is that me or what? That must be me. Oh, yeah, that must be. <laughs> I think I was there taking pictures of Doug skiing. Maybe that was it. Oh, I know what this was. This was when I got stuck on the, the slopes and he came strushing by so that I could take his picture. I didn't know that ever worked out. I took the wrong, he told me to take this certain lift, I took it, then I had to walk in hip deep snow, clear down to the lodge which was at the other run, and I was about thrashed that day. Okay, here we have the kids, uh, some celebration here, I think it's David's birthday. Let's see, well there's Dan just knocking the bows off. Let's see whose birthday this really is. It's not Christmas. There's Cheryl. And it's David unwrapping, so that's right. It's David's birthday. 
Oh, and there's another big birthday cake for him. See, Doug's birthday was March 6th, and his was one day later, so they always had their birthdays together. They liked it that way. They thought it was pretty fun. And so this is kind of a celebration also for Doug's birthday. And this would have been probably in 1971. So that was a pretty big day. So, let's see, he was born in 40, so 50, 60, 70. He was only 31 years old there, uh, Daddy Doug. And, uh, and then, oh look, they, Doug got, <laughs> David got a coonskin cap. Now it can be Danny Cro Davy Crockett, my goodness. Dave can be Dave, that's right. Look at Debbie's long ponytails. Look at Danny running around there. Grandma and Grandpa Doxy, Grandma and Grandpa Christensen. Linda is there. Boy, we had it all, didn't we, right there. Yeah. What's that, a little card that our daddy got for his birthday? Some kind of a book. My goodness, well, Grandpa's <laughs> losing his hair there, isn't he? Doesn't have much left. Hey, this was typical. Here's Aspen Grove with a, with a wheelbarrow full of kids right there by the old dining hall. I always wanted a big family portrait. That's as close as it came. But here is the 24th of July. And wow, what great days we had at Aspen. We had parades. Everybody would dress up. They had parades all around the grass. Oh my goodness, we made a little float there like a wagon. And all of the children that were at the whole camp were the friends of our children. And it was such a festive occasion. We had balloons. The little kids had balloons. Wow, look at this. This was Pioneer Day. And Elder Hanks was such a good friend. He had his cabin there and he suggested to Doug that he would like